In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome, everyone, to Our Lady of Las Vegas Church. Today, we are celebrating the 32nd Sunday of Ordinary Time. We gather on this Lord's Day to come into communion with Christ, that we may hear his word and be fed with his own body and blood in the Eucharist. Let us acknowledge our sins now as we prepare ourselves for God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. With this Mass, we continue our nine-day novena of Masses for the souls of the faithful departed, especially for those remembered through our All Souls Day memorials. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, Elijah the prophet went to Zarephath. 
As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called her out. Please, bring me a small cupful of water to drink. She left to get it, and he called out after her. Please, bring along a bit of bread. She answered, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and for my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first, make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and he and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor did the jug of oil run dry. As the Lord foretold through Elijah, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf. Not that he might offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by sacrifice. Just as it is appointed that human beings die once, and after this judgment, so also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. In the course of his teachings, Jesus said to the crowds, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in the synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and, as a pretext, recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowds put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury, for they have all contributed from their surplus wealth, but she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our scripture readings today uh, put the spotlight on two widows. One, the widow of Zarephath from our Old Testament first reading, and the poor widow uh, that Jesus observed in the gospel today. Being a widow or a widower or really anybody who has lost somebody that they love through death is not an easy thing. But for a widow in the Old Testament times and, and for a widow during the time of Jesus, it was especially sad and very, very difficult. A woman basically had no rights. Her identity was first through her father, then through her husband she married, and then, if widowed, through her son, if indeed she had one. On her own, she was practically left destitute. And even if she had a son, and he was young, as was the, the son of the widow of Zarephath, she was still destitute until her son became of age or that she would get married again. So it was this widow of Zarephath that God sent the prophet Elijah, and she was very poor. When Elijah asked her for some food, she indicated that she just had a couple of handfuls of flour and just a bit of oil and her jug, which, which she was just going right now to use to make some bread and feed her son and, and herself. And then she'd be left with nothing and probably die. But even the little that she had, she was willing to share with Elijah. It wasn't much, but she shared all she had. And because she did so, God saw to it that she and her son would be taken care of because God will not be outdone in generosity. A similar situation is happening in the gospel. Again, a poor widow comes forward to make an offering in the synagogue. So Jesus observes her amidst the many people are dropping in large donations, and Jesus makes a comment. He says to his disciples, This widow who gave only two small copper coins worth, in, worth only about a few cents in God's eyes, she gave more than all the others who put in large and substantial donations. Why? Well, because she gave from her need. She gave from her heart. And she made a sacrifice, sacrifice from all she had 
just as the widow of Zarephath did. It's no secret that Jesus uh, had a hard time with the scribes and the Pharisees. His difficulty with them was that they were hypocritical. They liked to do things for show and not from their hearts. The only thing that they were most sincere about was making themselves look good and important in the eyes of other people. And apparently, the synagogue treasury was in a place where people could observe who was giving what. So the rich people were observed as well as their donations. And while their donations were very generous, Jesus was more concerned with the reason of why they were making that donation at all. And that's why Jesus praised the widow because even though she had very little, she gave from her heart. She gave all she had. The others, he said, well, they gave from their surplus wealth. And even though their donations were substantial and they were very much appreciated, it wasn't that difficult for them to make those donations, to make that sacrifice, or if it even was. Let's, for a person who has, let's say, $100,000, a donation of $10 or maybe even $100 would be relatively easy for that person. But for a person who has only $10 to their name, donating just even a dollar or or $10 altogether would be a real sacrifice for that person. So today's gospel, it's not about money. It's about the human heart and a person's ability to extend his heart for the benefit of others. And that's what love is all about. Last Sunday, Jesus taught us the lesson of love. He he said that the greatest commandments that he gives to us is love, the love of God and love of neighbor. And there are levels. There are levels of sacrifice. Sometimes they're simple, and sometimes they're not. While doing good and helpful things for others is always good, the reason that we do them is also important, and that comes into play. God sees every human heart, and he knows the reason of why we do things. He knew it about the Pharisees and about the wealthy people, and he knew it about the poor widow who gave everything she had. Please join me now as we profess our faith together. I believe in in one one God, God, the Father Father, the Almighty, maker maker of heaven and earth, earth, and all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Like the poor widow, let us have the courage to, from our hearts, bring our prayers now before God, for ourselves and for all our brothers and sisters. For the church, that like the widows in today's readings, we may respond with generosity and hospitality beyond measure to the needs of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That those who were elected to public office this past week may govern with justice and integrity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our prayer. For all those who have have a hard time trusting that God will take care of their needs, that he will strengthen their wills, remove their fears, and give them the courage to follow God's will, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. For all those who support this parish, giving what they can through financial gifts 
or sharing of talents as volunteers and liturgical ministers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, for all who are in hospitals, nursing homes, and homebound, and for the intentions enrolled in our community book of prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For widows and widowers, and all those who find themselves struggling from the loss of loved ones, that they may find care and compassion in our parish community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who have died, especially for the people we are remembering through our All Souls Day memorials, for whom this Mass is offered, that they may be brought into the eternal peace of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all of our own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. O generous God, you have taught us how to give and how to share. Help us to imitate your generosity as you grant our needs and those of all our brothers and sisters in need through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For in Christ you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so, Father, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we now acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, 
by sending down your Spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, George Leo Thomas, and Gregory Gordon, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection all the souls in purgatory, all those who are remembered through our All Souls Day memorials, and all who have died in your mercy. Father, welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you, Father, throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, together let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us share with each other a sign of Christ's peace to us all.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Nourished by these sacred gifts, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the outpouring of your Spirit the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us for this Mass today here at Our Lady of Las Vegas Parish. Thank you to all of our ministers who assisted at Mass today, to Mel and... and, um, Mario for being our cantors today, to Mikhail for managing our cameras, and to David and Eva for being our musicians today. And thank you also for all of your donations which you give to us. As we heard in the gospel that Jesus, through Jesus, that God looks in our hearts and what we give and the reason of why we give it. So when you give or what you do for others, always do it out of the goodness of your heart and love for one another as, as Jesus teaches us is the greatest commandment of all. If anyone is celebrating a birthday or anniversary or something special going on in your life today or this week, God bless you and our best wishes to you. And if you are mourning the loss of a loved one or having something heavy going on in your heart and soul, please know that the Lord is always with you and our prayers are with you as well. And so as we go forth, let us do so humbly and with God's blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass has now ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. The church is one.